Well, hello, friends and family from around the world. This is Mike with Daily Events Worldwide, and we are on October 20th, 2022. Welcome to another surviving day on the planet. Welcome to the Daily Do, giving you your space weather update, as well as a look at earthquakes, volcanoes, and world weather. Checking out here the last 48 hours on our sun. First, 304 angstroms. We did have three pretty sizable C-class solar flares. In an outgoing position and as well earth-facing position. No major CMEs thwarted our way. Looking at the last 48 hours incoming. Watching that left side bright region behind the coronal hole. Definitely going to see some activity from those sunspot regions as they turn to an earth-facing view. You can see in that last clip there some plasma lifting away. As well, this is where we saw our C-class solar flares in an outgoing position. And as well, Earth-facing sunspot center disk. Another close look here at the sea flare events. Left-hand side there and top right. Looking at multi-spectrum. Last 48 hours of events. Long plasma filament stretching across the northern hemisphere. That long black line. And some pretty active spots turning in. One just coming into view and the other getting ready to come into view. Top left-hand side. That plasma tornado in the southern hemisphere is still there as well. Very noticeable here with this multi-spectrum. Looking here, 193 angstroms. You can see blackened region. That is the coronal hole, and that is a very large one, and we're about to see the wind stream from that coronal hole in the next two to four hours, actually. The telemetry is showing that it is on its way. Amazing imagery here brought to you by Solar Dynamics Observatory and mixed with daily events worldwide. Showing here 100... 171 angstroms. Three so uh, three C class solar flares to talk about. But as I said, nothing major has thwarted our way. No CMEs just yet. Having a look at the solar X ray flux as it remains in heightened C range after actually we had four C class solar flares. Proton flux remains low. Geomagnetic activity, KP1, after being up at KP4. Real-time solar wind, we're sitting at 416 kilometers per second right now, after jumping up to about 470. But the solar winds have been slowly dipping down, getting ready for that coronal hole wind stream. Looking here, Lasco 2, the last two days of events, that bright star cruising by the back of the sun is Venus. Much love, everybody, and I thank you all for tuning in every day to daily events worldwide, keeping humanity aware and prepared. Looking at the ISPA space prediction spiral, showing only that large CME taking off towards Mercury. It has not been updated yet. Schumann resonance for today is a power of 29. Quick look at the telemetry. Quality of 12, power of 19, amplitude 29. Now let's get to earthquakes past 24 hours as it is very busy. 400 earthquakes across the USGS map and it started early this morning with a large 6.7 Pico Chica, Panama, that's off the coastline there. No tsunami was detected. East Pacific rise, 5.4. Antofagasta, Chile, 4.4. Activity slowing down through the Caribbean. And we did see an increase in activity across the West Coast and California for sure. 3.8 there, San Clemento. California, and as well, Redway, California, Northern California saw 
and minor activity in between and as well around the San Francisco Bay Area. Quick look at USGS. As you can see, 406 earthquakes in the, on the map the past 24 hours. We're going to zoom in to California as they've seen about 250 earthquakes through the region. 200, 232 across the whole state. Also notable here, about 16 earthquakes rocking the Yellowstone north and one just south there. And notable here, a couple minor earthquakes detected atop both Mount Rainier and Mount St. Helens. So stay tuned, stay aware, prepare for daily events. Something's brewing along the Pacific Northwest. Looking through Alaska, increased activity, a lot of minor activity, more so but largest in the region being a 3.7 point possession, Alaska. 4.8 earthquake here south of Kamchatka. Severo, Russia. 4.9 here detected. Marianas Islands as well. 4.9 there, Taiwan. 4.5, Mandano, Philippines, 69 kilometer depth. Activity around Luatolo Volcano, 4.4 and a 4.3 there. 5.1 earthquake, Andaman Islands, India region. 4.9 earthquake here, Southwest Indian Ridge. 4.2 Afghanistan, pretty deep there. And as well, Turkey seeing a 4.3. Get to our Fiji region here where we saw our deepest earthquake today, 611 kilometer depth, 4.5. Also notable here, 5.2 Kermadec Islands. And south of New Zealand here, 4.6 Auckland Islands. New Zealand. Heads up, I do believe we are expecting something even more than that 6.7. Let's get to the Pacific Disaster Center, showing the most recent satellite imagery and as well pointing out the most recent volcanoes getting updated. Some pretty large systems over the Pacific right now. As you can see, satellite imagery here. That one large low has now penetrated North America up through Alaska and is going to be mixing with that polar vortex and bringing snow forecast for eastern Canada. Watch for this atmospheric river to slowly move towards the west coast, British Columbia, and as well Washington. So a bit of relief coming, but not for a while. 223 active hazards, and most of them are flood alerts as we're trying to scroll through here, trying to find volcanoes. Here we are, Popo in Mexico. Karinchi in Indonesia, that's another one that has awakened. Sabancaya in Peru. Sangay in Ecuador. Reventador in Ecuador. As well, Langila, Papua New Guinea. So now we are sitting at 53 volcanoes that are active and erupting across the planet. Notable here, very large system forming north of Hawaii ushering in some high surf warnings. Quick look at satellite imagery of that system that is building. Very strong convergence line. High surf advisory for Hawaiian Islands. Stronger velocity, larger systems are developing and continue to do so. Looking across the world at the rest of the satellite imagery, we have one Tropical Depression 25 there, who will be taking the same track as NISAT as posted yesterday. Very large low pressure system off the coast of Europe. And some heavy daily evaporation rain South America and tropical storm Rosalind is alive it's going to break up the Mexico coastline having a look here at windy.com showing low pressure systems and windy models for the next seven days 
Big windy systems heading up into the United Kingdom this week. Very strong winds. And as well, the west coast, British Columbia, up into Alaska. Some big lows heading your way. Looking at the southern hemisphere versus the northern. Look at the size of that low south of Africa. Crazy stuff. Much love, everybody, and I appreciate you all tuning in together here with daily events worldwide, staying aware and prepared with all of our worldly events. Have a quick look here at precipitation forecast models for the next few days. As you can see, moisture coming in by this weekend for British Columbia and as well Washington State. But that's about as far south as that moisture is going to get until the long range. First week in November, we might see a system dip further south. So snow forecasted for most of eastern Canada. And we've got one more warm push. And then we can expect winter. Strong system there affecting the United Kingdom and Europe. Tropical system heading up into Myanmar and as well Thailand, Vietnam. Daily rains continue across southeastern Australia and will increase over the next three days. That will be a bit concerning here with those storms heading up into Myanmar. And as well, Vietnam, watch for flash flooding conditions from both of these systems heading into the same region. Thanks, everybody, for watching today. Much love. Stay aware and prepared. Stay young and have fun and get your daily due. We'll see you next video. Bye-bye now. Today's video, please hit that like button, subscribe, share with your friends and family from across the world.